God that you're with us today and uh, I, I'm looking forward to this service. I believe it's going to be <clears throat> a very powerful service, excuse me, and uh, if you have a need, you need to hear from God, you need a word, you need a healing, deliverance, whatever it may be. The Bible says the anointing destroys the yoke and so this morning as we have come on the air, the anointing is flowing the healing anointing is flowing, the, the anointing to, to destroy poverty and lack and want, fear and anxiety, whatever it is that, that the devil's throwing against you, uh, that anointing to break that and destroy that is here and flowing right now. So I want you to take it by faith. And how do you do that? Say, Father, I believe I received my deliverance from, and you declare it in the name of Jesus. Amen. All right. Well, welcome. Pastor Bill Emmons here. Covenant Faith Center, CFC Ministries International, and uh, this is our Sunday morning service, in case you hadn't figured that out. Um, we are an online church after spending 45 years behind a pulpit in a, in a building with a congregation. The Lord moved us and, uh, and basically instructed us to start an online church, uh, so we're doing that, and I am still a pastor. It doesn't change the giftings. The callings and giftings are God of God. I'm sorry are without repentance, which means he does not change his mind. When God first called me into the ministry, I was shocked that he would even call me into the ministry, but he called me as a teacher, 
Didn't know what that was exactly. All I knew was Sunday school teachers and so forth. Uh, but I found out there was actually an office of ministry that has an anointing for teaching the Word of God. And then later on, uh, God opened up an opportunity and spoke to me about um, becoming a pastor. Said I was a pastor, I'm not gonna be, I am. And uh, that, that anointing came on me. I've been a pastor now for 50, well, let's see. I would say, uh, well, I haven't been 50 years pastoring, it's 50 years of ministry, but um, four more years, as you see, yeah, about four more years, I will, uh, we will ce celebrate our 50th year pastoring. So we've been around for a little while. <laughs> and uh, also the Lord spoke to me at one point early on in our ministry that there was a healing anointing on me. And every time, just the last, uh, well, last year, I guess it was, God spoke to me and said, tell the people there's a healing anointing and that since there's no time or distance in the spirit realm, that every time you go on the air, that healing anointing is flowing and it will flow and, and, and there's no end to it because it's a spiritual thing. And whenever you see this program, the healing anointing will be there to manifest and bring healing into your body. So if you're watching this uh, a year from now, it doesn't matter what it is, receive your healing in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. We're going to set up our next um, worship song this morning now. Uh, I have done my best to screen these songs multiple times last night and today, and uh, it, we have not been plagued by commercials like we were uh, the last two or three weeks where it seemed like no matter what song we chose, there were commercials popping up. Uh, so we, we believe in the name of Jesus that these songs will not be interrupted to disturb your worship, and we're going to worship God. Uh, this uh, next song, uh, Praise His Name, is a very powerful song. I want to encourage you to worship with us, not just be an observer, but be a participator, be doers of the word. Amen? We worship, as we worship God, we stop the enemy and we steal the avenger. So the devil goes on the run as we worship God. So take an advantage of this opportunity uh, to worship God during, during this, uh, these songs that we uh, are uh, playing because we're worshiping God. That's, that's what that's about. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's get it started. Yeah. 
praise his name forever. The Lord our God. Amen. That's such a powerful song. And I wish it was longer because I could get into that. Praise God. But um, praise the Lord. That's just a, a powerful message. Amen. This next song that we're going to sing is the Revelation song. You may have heard of it. Another powerful worship song. So let's keep the worship going this morning in the name of Jesus.
Hallelujah. What a great song. Praise and glory and honor to our Lord of Lords, our King of Kings, Almighty God, Creator of the universe. Amen. Praise God. I enjoy these songs and I'd be singing except I can't. I can't. I can, but I can't. Uh, all of our microphones are on microphones. In other words, I can't turn them off. They're built into our cameras, and uh, I don't know which one is which. So once we get a, a techie engineer or um, assistant in here to do all that, he'll know how to shut off the mics and, and just get the feed from the uh, music or worship. Uh, but until that happens, I can't. Pastor Mary and I, we're sitting here, we're wanting to sing so bad, and, and we're having to hum. You might even hear us humming in the background. But we're worshiping. And uh, we hope you have worshiped with us this morning. This is our Sunday morning service. And uh, we have a Tuesday night Bible study, which is one hour. And then we have Thursday's word, which is about 20 minutes. I say about because I never know for sure. Last Thursday, this past Thursday, I just about got to the preaching mode. Uh, I got so blessed by the message. See, I, when God gives me a message or a word, I get blessed by it. And so when I come on and I, if I'm excited and I'm praising God and I'm talking and, you know, going here and going there and, um, it's because that anointing is on me and, uh, you know, I, I enjoy walking in the anointing and when the anointing is flowing, it'll get on you. And if you'll allow yourself to worship and praise God, uh, it'll get all over you. <laughs> praise God. Anyway, let me shut down this computer here and, um, <clears throat> Praise God, we got through all three songs without a commercial. Um, when we're using things off the internet like that, uh, because a lot of ministries monetize their programming, uh, seems like commercial can pop up, pop up anytime uh, in the middle of you know somebody's message, in the middle of a worship song, and you know one thing I really don't like is to be walking around the house praising God with one of these worship songs and right in the middle of it they interrupt my worship my my time with God with a commercial and uh, I think you know I, I I don't think the money they're making off that is worth that uh, and that's my opinion I'm not criticizing anybody but um, it, it has happened in the last few weeks we've had challenges with that uh, but I, I've screened these over and over and over again. And uh, so praise God, we were able to do these uh, and spend some time in worship. We welcome you. Praise the Lord. Uh, we're going to invite our Instagram family. Uh, oh, no, we got a, Pastor Mary's got a word. So what I'm going to do is uh, she's going to turn the light on. Okay, it's on the other side, right above the cord plug. There we go. Yeah, you can turn that one off now. We have to adjust our lights. We only have one set of lights at this point. And so like right now, I'm, I'm in monster mode where I've got half of my face in dark. And uh, Pastor Mary is in bright mode because it's so close to her. I probably should have put it further away. But um, anyway, I'm going to turn this over to Pastor Mary and she's going to give you a word of exhortation, which is what she does. So get ready to be encouraged. Hello, uh, this is the day the Lord hath made. We are rejoicing and we're glad in it. I do have something to say. I'm, I've been getting some messages from people saying, could you pray about different things? We heard about the, uh, the attack on Israel yesterday morning and uh, we've been praying about that. I believe those that are listening love Israel and they're praying. Uh, but when I get a message like that, I think, you know, what does that mean if I say I'm praying? What am I praying? When someone asks you to pray, what are you praying? And so I, I asked the Lord, how do I pray about this? And what came to me was the 91st Psalm because they call that the soldier Psalm because it's it's a prayer uh, soldiers can use during battle. A thousand will fall at our side, 10,000 at our right hand, but it will not come near us. So I shared that with, with whoever asked for prayer. I said, you know, I will pray and I'll agree. On the 91st Psalm, let's start praying that over. This person had a friend that was in the middle of what's going on right now in Israel. And so they wanted prayer for protection. And then I get, I get requests for prayers about um, sickness. Somebody has an attack in their body. 
and they say pray and I usually say okay I'll pray but when I say that I tell what I'm going to pray because just saying I'll pray what does that mean some people could be begging God uh, for that person to be healed some people could be praying if it's thy will God's word says we have been healed by the stripes of Jesus so you have to know the word when you pray so that you can pray the word for whatever the situation is if it's healing for someone's body agree that in the name of Jesus that body gets in line with the word of God and they receive the healing power of, of God because Isaiah 53 verses 4 and 5 says surely he bore our sickness and carried our pain and by his stripes we are healed there's so many scriptures that explain and talk about healing that it belongs to us I have such a revelation in my heart of healing Jesus said in, in Matthew he said which is easier to say thy sins be forgiven thee or to say arise and walk which means when he took our sin we were forgiven and the result of sin which is sickness poverty lack and, and, and poverty lack and oppression depression whatever it is that's been canceled in our life so I look at at sickness differently I look at it as something that the devil is trying to stick to rob us from when we've already been healed by the stripes of Jesus so I pray in accordance with the word you and I need to know the word so we know when someone says pray how to pray so that we get results we don't just want empty prayers we just want to pray any old thing and some people say I'll pray and then forget about it never pray if you give your word you're going to pray then stop right then Ask the Lord, how do I pray about this? And then pray according to the word of God. There are times when someone says, would you pray? And I can't pray right away because the Holy Spirit says, wait a minute. You need to get some things worked out. This is how I want you to pray about this. So take time when you say you're going to pray to pray according to the word so that you get results and they get results. And then you're in agreement with what they're praying. It's not just something you're praying by yourself, but two or more. When you agree on something, according to the word, Jesus said he's in the midst of that, and you will receive your answer. That's it. Receive today and be blessed. Praise the Lord. That was a good, <clears throat> a good exhortation. And uh, now Pastor Mary's going to adjust the light. So I've got, there we go. Now we got decent light. Praise the Lord. All right. Um, and uh, let's see. Uh, you got to shut off this camera up here. I can see the glare on the monitor. <clears throat> All right. We're going to, is the, that camera shut off down there? Okay. We have uh, one, two, three, four, five cameras that operate. One is specifically for Instagram. Uh, then the rest we do the Facebook feed. And eventually we're going to have the ability to uh, send out our signal or our, our live stream to multiple um, destinations, um, uh, social media platforms, uh, as soon as uh, we get in the financial position. To do, yeah, you go ahead and put that on. As soon as we um, are in the financial position to do that. But um, anyway, so we have to, um, the lights, we've only got one set of lights. We're leaving God for another set of lights. But um, until that comes, we have to move the lights and, you know, kind of do like we've been doing. But it works. Praise God. Well, we welcome you, uh, Instagram family. Good to have you with us. And uh, some good things. Uh, I'm excited about the things of God. I'm excited about the time we're living in. Um, if, if Jesus doesn't come back in my lifetime, I, I'd be very surprised. Uh, things are coming to a head. And uh, nothing to be scared of if you're a believer. Nothing to be scared of. Uh, the Bible says that we are not appointed to God's wrath. And it clearly states that the tribulation period is the wrath of God poured out on, uh, on the evil people that have rejected uh, and have uh, fought and lived against God and against the, the belief in Jesus. And um, But we won't be here for that. We'll be caught up. But... <clears throat> the um, when you look in the Bible and you read where it says there'll be great falling away, and a lot of preachers use that to say that, uh, well, you know, there'll be a, a great fall, apostasy or apostasy, um, you know, falling away. But actually, there's another word that defines that, and it's called separation. 
And the Bible does declare there will be a separation. Uh, the, the sheaf from the, uh, the, the, um, let's say, say the wheat from the chaff, I think it's called, um, the, um, uh, clearly a separation of evil from good. And, uh, before the breath of God can be poured out, the righteous have to be removed. The Bible says, uh, talking about the Antichrist, he cannot be revealed until he, which, um, uh, let's see, how, what's the word, uh, withholdeth? Restraint. Restraints, yeah. He which restraineth uh, is taken out of the way. The church, the believers, not the organized church, the believers are the restraining force in the earth. That's why the devil can't just destroy everything he wants to destroy uh, and kill everybody and, and uh, <clears throat> try and take control of everything. He's trying, but he can't, excuse me, <clears throat> because there's a restraining force here. It's called the body of Christ. And so it clearly states that the Antichrist cannot be revealed. You may think you know who the Antichrist is. I, I think I know, but he's not revealed. And he cannot be revealed until we are separated from this earth so that the, the whole stuff, the, the, how do I say it? I don't want to say program. The whole scenario that's going to happen mm -hmm will happen uh, in this earth after we're gone. And we'll spend seven years with the Lord in heaven. If you don't believe that, that's okay. You can stay if you want. Personally, I don't want to stay. <laughs> but we'll be coming back at the end of seven years with Jesus mm -hmm. for him to set up his uh, kingdom on the earth for a thousand years. Mm -hmm. That's called the millennial reign. And I'm excited about that too. It's going to be some phenomenal things that we, our mind at this point can't even wrap around what it's going to be like, but it's going to be glorious. Anyway, I want to give you your uh, uh, prosperity scripture for this morning, or for this week, actually. And this comes out of Numbers 13, 30, and 2 Peter 1, verses 3 and 4. And it's, it's in the form of a confession or declaration of faith. Uh, now, you understand when we do confession or declarations of faith, we're not demanding God to do anything. What we're doing is we're agreeing with God and declaring his promise over our lives. So here we go. God has given me all things that pertain to life and godliness. And I am well able to possess all that God has provided for me. That's a simple declaration or confession. Let me read it again. God has given me all things that pertain to both life and godliness. I am well able to possess all that God has provided for me. Numbers 13, 30 and 2 Peter 1, verses 3 and 4. So take that, and the purpose of this is to give you something to stand on and build your faith on. And um, do this every day. I, I would suggest um, every morning when you get up, read, read that confession. Say it over yourself, over your family, over your businesses, your finances, your, your job, whatever it may be. And then every night before you go to bed, it takes you, what, 10 seconds, 20 seconds to say it? And uh, what it's doing is, as you continue to do this, this is meditating the Word of God. And it renews your mind. So you begin to think the way God thinks. And that scripture is the way God thinks. And as you meditate it over time, you will begin to think the way God thinks. It will develop your faith. It will give you vision or hope, biblical hope. Uh, I mean, it, there's so many things that it does. And so meditating on verses like that really may have an impact in your life. So take that, do it. Like James says, be a doer of the word. Amen. Now, I want to share something good with you. I think this will bless you. We've been talking about reaching um, a, a baseline or average of 25,000 views per week. Well, today, we're at 25, as of 11.30 this morning, we we're at 25,307 views this week. So we're moving up. We, we've actually jumped up uh, from last week quite a bit. And uh, last night when I checked at 11.30 last night, we were at 24,767. And so we, we went over, what, 500 plus views overnight? and to 25,307 and probably more before we actually came on the air. So praise God for that. 
Now we're believing that that becomes our new baseline, mm -hmm. that uh, it's not an occasional thing, that will become the norm. And when it does over the next uh, month, maybe two months, we'll set a new goal to reach out more. Now here's the, the interesting thing. You guys that have been faithfully uh, backing this ministry and praying for us and doing what we've asked you to do have made this possible. You have made it possible for us to reach more people. We're sitting here in our studio, uh, my office, it's my office uh, slash studio. And uh, so we're sitting here and uh, we're talking to people around the world, literally. And every time we get a big boost in your responses, the algorithm that run all these social media platforms will expand the, the number of people we can reach. And I know we don't, if you're not involved with this, you, you might not even be aware of that. So what we've asked you to do, we, and we ask you to do it today, is click the like button. You can do it right now. It takes you, what, three seconds? Mm -hmm. And then click the share button. Share it both with your group and publicly. And then click the follow or the subscribe button, whichever one is on the, the social media platform you're watching on. Uh, click the notification button. That way you can be notified whenever we come on the air. And then please give us a comment. Now there's, uh, there's some of you that are doing that faithfully and every week I see comments and by the way, we don't want negative, hey, need a good, I just saw your name on, come up on the screen. Good to have you with us this morning. Um, but every time you put a comment in there and, and there's a couple of people that just are faithful to do that. Uh, that comment actually registers on the algorithm. That's, that is activity. And what the algorithm looks for is activity on the programming. The programming that has the most activity gets front and center, gets promoted, gets advertised. And we believe that's going to happen with us. It, maybe it is. We're not aware of it already. So praise God, we've hit that uh, goal, but we're not stopping with, well, maybe we did it today. I want to do that from now on, and then go from there. Amen. All right. Um, so I want to let you know about that. Uh, let's see. I told you, okay. Um, I want to share something with you that <clears throat> took me by surprise this week. Uh, well, actually last Sunday night, I believe it was, Pastor Olin Ross uh, went to be with the Lord, um, stepped over into glory, and uh, or transition to heaven, <laughs> whatever term you want to use. Um, pastor Olin Ross, he, he was my associate pastor for over 30 years, uh, probably closer to 40, I'm not sure. We never really kept track. But back in the, <clears throat> I think it was, he was either late, late 70s or early, early 80s, 1970s, 1980s. Uh, he came on as associate pastor and ha had been with us for a lot of years. And um, just like, and I shared with you about uh, Jose Magdaleno, he went home to be with the Lord a few weeks back. Well, actually now it's been about, what, three months or so. Uh, another person who came into this ministry about the same time was a faithful supporter of this ministry, uh, prayer warrior, always had encouraging words. And uh, one of those people that every once in a while, him and his wife would bless us. That's always nice. <laughs> but um, uh, he was one of those guys that uh, uh, would ask for prayer for somebody, uh, like his uncle who actually died from being swarmed by bees and being stung all over his body. He died, was pronounced dead at the scene when the paramedics uh, arrived. But they took him to the hospital, the doctors examined him, pronounced him dead. And a little while later, after we had prayed, we prayed in between those events. And when we prayed, God raised him up. And that was because people like Jose Magdaleno were, were, were just, you know, uh, wise enough to believe God, faithful and trustworthy enough to believe that God would hear and God would answer. And they'd call us and say, Pastor, we need to pray. And we'd pray and God would do miracles. Mm -hmm. Well, Pastor Olin Ross was another person like that that was faithful and, uh, you know, it's, uh, we, we need to pray for his family, uh, Evelyn and, and Lorenz, uh, just like we've been praying for uh, the Magdaleno family. 
Um, we hate to talk about this kind of thing because in one sense, it's a loss to all of us that are here. Lost to the family, lost to us. They're not lost. They're in heaven and they're celebrating, they're having a good time and they are not the least bit worried about what we're doing because they're involved with heaven now. And uh, I'm sure both of them, when they made that transition, were greeted by friends and family. And uh, just, uh, you know, I've heard all kinds of stories about how people have been greeted into heaven, uh, but I know it was a glorious thing. So praise God that they're there and we will see them. It won't be all that long mm -hmm. and we'll be there with them. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, so we pray for the families. Amen. All right. Um, with that, I want to do something that uh, is very important, as you may have heard on the news. Uh, Israel has been attacked and it's already been likened in, in the news media to e the equivalent of the uh, Six Day War back in, I think it was 1967. Uh, I think that's about the time, it was in the late 60s when Israel was attacked. And, uh, and in that case, it was multiple countries that attacked them at, uh, simultaneously. In this case, it's Hamas from the Gaza area that has been attacking hundreds and hundreds of missiles uh, that have been flying into Israel. There's been hundreds of people killed. There's been um, who knows how many injured at this point. We don't know. Uh, they've actually uh, come into Israeli territory and taken hostages, mm -hmm. <clears throat> even people in, in um, hospitals and, and rest homes. They've been taken as hostages. Uh, I mean, it's just been uh, just terrible things that have taken place. And uh, it's an all-out attack, and Israel has declared war. And uh, we don't know if, the, and we, I know that the, uh, there's another uh, group that's, that wants to come through, have, have a passageway through Iran to, to get to the Middle East so they can fight this war. Well, if anybody remembers history, Israel doesn't lose. <laughs> They're coveted people. And uh, they may go through some hard times, but they win. And uh, you can go back and read about the Six Day War. It, it was a phenomenal victory. And uh, that's the way it is with Israel. God is not going to let any group or any other nation drive them out of existence because they are the original covenant people uh, from Abraham. And uh, God made a covenant. He won't quit and he won't back down on that covenant. He will keep it and he will protect Israel and fight on their behalf. And we need to get on their side. And um, there was a gentleman who heads up some program in Israel, uh, a Jewish man. I, I, I don't know much about him, but he made a comment this morning that really got my attention. He says, you know, there used, we used to have a lot of friends to, of Israel that would help us and support and different things. He said, but uh, there's been a lot of former friends, that, you know, they're not friends anymore. They're not doing a thing to really help us not just survive, but be what God called us to be here. And he said, but there's, there's one ministry and it was um, Kenneth Copeland Ministries. Um, he said, they have become probably our biggest friend. And I know for a fact that they support Israel uh, financially and, and every way you can think of and very, very big supporters of Israel, probably bigger than any, any other group in this country. And yet we got people criticizing them because, you know, they don't like the way they preach or what they teach. And yet look what they're doing. So I want to pray. The Bible says in, um, I believe it's Psalm 122, verse 6, pray for the peace of Jerusalem. And I want to do that. Now, I haven't heard about Hezbollah. Hezbollah is up in Lebanon, right above Israel. And I haven't heard if they've gotten involved or not. They've kind of taken over Lebanon. And so we need to pray against that interference and other um, Muslim countries coming in and trying to uh, kill, steal, and destroy. Father, we lift up Israel before you right now. We pray for Israel. We pray for the peace of Jerusalem according to your word. We pray for your covenant people, Father. You've got a covenant with Israel. And Father, we stand with them as we walk in the same covenant and we put our faith out there and believe for them, Father, that you will maintain 
their right and their cause, that you will drive out their enemies from before them, that their enemies cannot stand before them in the name of Jesus. We send forth ministering angels of God to garrison about the people of Israel and provide the power and protection of Almighty God upon them, no matter what it may look like. Deliver them from these attacks in the name of Jesus. And right now we speak to the demonic spirits that have been assigned in this endeavor uh, against Israel. You spirits that are trying to be a part of the, the destruction of Israel, we come against you. The word of God declares what we bind is bound. So we bind you. We break your power over this whole situation. We demand that you cease and desist in your attempt to destroy Israel. And because the word says what we bind is bound, we bind you and command you to cease in Jesus' name. And we send forth, as I said before, angels of God to go forth and fight for Israel right now. No matter who comes against them, bring them forth in victory in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Be praying for Israel. Uh, praying in the spirit. If you, if you know how to do that, pray in the spirit. Let the Holy Spirit direct your prayers. And uh, pray for them until this thing is resolved. And I believe it's going to be a quick resolution. Uh, in the name of Jesus, Israel did has declared as a as a counter uh, act has declared war, and uh, so they've got their their jets in the air and the, their iron dome is working. And boy, if you could have seen the video, I just saw a short video of the of the iron dome at work. And there's what what happens is when it detects an, an incoming missile, it immediately launches a counter attack against that missile. And the video showed that up in the air as these missiles were going forth to destroy the incoming missiles. They, man, they were going all over the place and hitting, you know, missiles in midair. And, uh, but it was a surprise attack because it, it happened on one of Israel's most holy days. I think it is the most holy day, uh, which was yesterday. And, uh, boy, God doesn't put up with that. That's, uh, that's a curse. The devil's trying to put down the things of God, and that's not going to happen. Amen. All right. Um, Pastor Mary, is there anything else I've missed that I should talk, mention? I think I got it all. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Good. Good. Well, y'all be praying for us. We're believing God for a number of things. And um, we, we believe that God's opening up doors of utterance for us. And um, if there's any pastors watching, by the way, we are available. <laughs> I'll just share that with you. If you have a home church you're attending, and your church has uh, guest speakers come in. Uh, let the Lord direct you, but you might mention us to your pastor. Uh, we're we're ready to go, man. We're we've been preaching for fifty years. We're not going to wind down now. We're revving up. Hallelujah! All right, we're going to get into our message this morning. I know we've taken up some time. Uh, let me see where we. Okay, we we got enough time. Uh, we're limited on Instagram, so we have to kind of govern our timing based on Instagram. All right. Uh, I, I shared a part one. I didn't know it was going to be part one. But last week, uh, the title was Holding Fast. So this is part two. Holding Fast, part two. And I, I'm, I'm going to give you five points that I uh, want you to write down if you're taking notes, and I hope you are. Uh, five points of holding fast. And let me, actually, let me go to my notes here and to my last page of notes. I'm just going to give you the five points. I'm going to go back and talk about it. That'll make it easy. Number one, obviously, hold fast. I'll talk about that. Number two, stand. You say, well, isn't that the same thing? It could be, but it's, it's another aspect of what we're talking about. While standing, see, it's not just holding fast. Now there's things to do while you're standing. Take control of your thoughts. Declare the end from the beginning. In other words, the end results of your prayer. Uh, cast all your cares on the Lord in the process while you're standing. See, sometimes people say, I'm going to stand and believe God, and then the pressure comes, and they, they don't stand, and, and they don't cast the care. They're walking around worried and fretful. Oh, Lord, what am I going to do? I can't do this, and I can't do that, and, you know, and uh, that's not holding fast. All right. Number four, meditate the word. Get the revelation the Holy Spirit's trying to reveal to you. And then do it or act on it. So until you're fully persuaded, in other words, you do this, 
You meditate the word until you become fully persuaded like Abraham was. Then you do like Abraham who did like God and you begin declaring the end. In other words, what you're believing for, you declare the end result as done from the moment you say amen. When I pray about something, when I say amen, in my mind and with my words and actions, it is a done deal. All right, that amen means so be it. All right, so so be it done. All right, and then uh, the third part of that, uh, meditating the word, getting the revelation, doing, is corresponding actions, and we'll talk about that. And then the fifth thing is give God praise and thanksgiving for the results before you see them. Now, you need to see the results in your heart and in your mind, and that's called hope or vision, but before it manifests in the flesh, you need to be thanking God for the results uh, that you have not seen manifested yet. I, Pastor Mary and I, you know, we're believing God for new vehicles, and, uh, and you know, we've been thanking God. We declare we have our new vehicles. Uh, we're believing God for our own home. We believe God we have our own home. We declare it uh, every day. And uh, we, we've lived this way for 50 years, and some things have taken longer than others. Some things have happened almost instantly. But we know the principles, and we stand on the principles of God's faithful word to us. Amen. All right, so Hebrews chapter 4, verse 14. By the way, if it sounds like I'm talking fast, it's because our time is uh, kind of we're boxed in time-wise. Uh, so I need to get as much out to you as I can in the time I've got. Uh, the other thing is you can always rewind and go back and listen to it. If I'm talking too fast, you can slow me down and listen to the piece by piece. Amen. Hebrews 4 verse 14 for the King James translation. Seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens, Jesus, the son of God. And let me just insert there for your thinking, Jesus is the living word, according to John 1, 14. So we have the Son of God, the living word that's passed into the heavens. Let us hold fast our profession or confession. That's what profession is. It's a confession. All right. Confession of what? What the word of God says. Hold fast to what the word says. That scripture, that Bible is God's word to us. And wherever there's a promise, we can stand on that promise. The covenant promises of Abraham. Galatians 3.13 says, Christ hath redeemed us from the curse, be made a curse for us, so that the blessings of Abraham might come on us. Those blessings belong to us. Paul wrote and talks about that the, it's not the... Uh, people that are the blood descendants of Abraham that, that are the children of Abraham, but it's the people of the faith of Abraham. It's the people that live and walk in the kind of faith Abraham lived and walked in. And that was miraculous, supernatural faith. He just believed God no matter what it looked like, no matter what it felt like, no matter what the circumstances were, no matter what people said. He believed God, he talked it, and he walked it. And that's the way we've got to move in faith. Amen. All right, uh, so in Titus chapter 1, verse 9, <clears throat> King James translation, it says, holding fast the faithful word. What are we holding fast to? The faithful word. When God gives us a promise, it is a faithful word from God. I've heard people recently say, well, the Bible isn't God's word. That's just a comp compilation of a bunch of authors uh, writing down their opinions. No, I'm sorry. The Bible is God's word. In fact, in the New Testament, it says no one should add to or take away from it. Otherwise, the curse comes on them. We've got to take God's word as it is the word of God. God speaking to us through all these writers. 66 books, 40, uh, it's over 40 authors. I, I don't recall the exact number, 44 or something like that. I don't know. Um, but it's amazing. None of them contradict each other. They all are in agreement in everything they say. And so we can stand on that word. Okay. Holding fast the faithful word as he hath been taught, that he may be able, that you might be able, 
All right, you, when, you, when you hold fast to the word of God, it gives you the ability, here it says, he may be able by sound doctrine both to exhort and to convince the, the gainsayers. As you meditate the word of God, as you hold fast to it, and part of holding fast is meditating it on a daily basis, that equips you and gives you sound doctrine. In other words, the word of God will become your doctrine. Mm -hmm. Not a bunch of man-made stuff but what God says. All right. Holding fast the word produces sound doctrine. Now, the second step I told you was to stand. So the first thing we talk about is holding fast. The second thing is standing. So there's a difference between holding fast and standing. Holding fast, uh, we're, we're hanging on, we're, stand, we're believing God, we're declaring the word, we're meditating it, we're, we're acting on the word. But then standing indicates that there may be some time between the time you begin to use your faith on a situation and pray about it and the time it manifests. I shared with you the first miracle car we ever got uh, was a 1973 Chevy Caprice. And we prayed in 1973 and asked God for it, gave away our car that we had. And I was shocked that it wasn't there overnight. You know, it took five years. But in, on the fifth year, God gave me the car, not, not the specific one we looked at, but the same car, the same model, everything uh, that we had prayed for. And uh, we didn't have to go out and buy it. We didn't have to go do anything. God sent somebody to us with it. And we and actually, they gave us that car. All right. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 11, King James Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able, there's that word able again. Apparently what we're going to do here makes us able to do something. Here it says able to stand. When we put on the armor of God, we went through that last week. You then have the ability to stand against all the wiles of the devil. In other words, there's nothing he can throw at you that can keep you from standing if you will stand. You can lay down and wave a white flag. That's just a notice for the devil to come and try and kill you. And we don't wave the white flag. We're not surrenderers. We're conquerors, more than conquerors. Mm -hmm. All right. Verse 13 says, Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, not just a little bit of it, so that you may be, again, able to withstand on the evil day. That's whenever the devil attacks. That's the evil day. This is not talking about the tribulation period. This is not talking about the final judgment. The evil day is whenever the devil attacks you, that's the evil day. All right. So when you take the whole armor of God, you will have the ability to withstand whatever the devil's throwing at you, any time of the day or night, it doesn't matter. And having done all to stand. So now we talk about holding fast and standing. All right. Verse 14 says, stand therefore. Again, verse 16, above all things, take the shield of faith, wherewith you can quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. Not just some of them. Faith can put a stop on every attack of the devil against you. Now, when people criticize the message of faith, they're criticizing one of the, the things that God has given us that can stop the attacks of the enemy. If we don't teach faith, how can people have that shield in front of them? How can they understand and learn how to, how to put that shield up in, in front of them and put a stop to the devil's attacks? We have to teach faith. It's the shield of faith that stops the attacks. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, verse 17, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, the rhema, the spoken word. And that again, people criticize you know, the, the faith teaching, the, well, you go around confessing this, confessing that. We have learned to stand in faith and declare God's word, which is the rhema of God. God spoke it and is no less God's word if I speak it. And so when I declare in my standing what God has promised me, I'm hitting the devil. I'm, I'm, I'm jabbing him. I remember back uh, when we were uh, early on in our in our marriage and the church we attended, we had some friends that were about the same age and 
uh, they sat right in front of us where, you know, you, you attend a church and you kind of get used to sitting in the same spot all the time. You kind of get a little offended if somebody comes in and sits in your spot, you know. And so uh, we had, I think we were like the third row back or fourth row back and our friends were set right in front of us. And every once in a while, uh, the husband, after the pastor was done preaching, service was over, he'd get up and he'd start going like this and going, you know. I said, well, what are you doing? He says, I'm wiping off the blood. Boy, the pastor got me with that sword of the spirit. He just jabbed me all over the place. <laughs> Well, he was being a little bit funny, but the fact is the sword of the spirit, the, the declared uh, word of God out of our mouth is our sword. It's what Jesus used to run the devil off. Amen. So people that go around criticizing, oh, you people think you can confess anything you want, you know? No, we confess the word of God. That's what God promised. And when we confess the word of God, we make a declaration of that word out of our mouth, we are fighting the devil just like Jesus did when Jesus said, it is written, we're doing the same thing. It is written, the word of God says, devil, you're a liar. God said, the word says, and we're just, we're stabbing him. I mean, he'll, he'll run off and leave you for a while. Uh, it's what he did to Jesus that he waited for a better opportunity and Jesus never gave him one. Why don't you be like Jesus and never give the devil another opportunity to come against you by constantly declaring the promises of God. Anyway. All right, so um, we stand on the word and we stand by the word. Now, let me explain that. We stand on the word, uh, what God has declared, God's promises. We're standing on, what are you standing on? I'm standing on the promise of God. By the stripes of Jesus, I was healed, therefore I am healed. But we stand by the word through the confession of our mouth. I'm not just mentally standing on the word of God. I'm not just mentally agreeing that it's true and accepting it as mine, I'm, I'm doing something and I'm speaking and declaring what God has declared that belongs to me. And we call that confessing the word and it's gotten a bad reputation. But we do that because it keeps it alive and it is the sword of the spirit and it does drive the devil off. When he attacks and you come back with the word, he can't take much of that. He only took three from Jesus and he was gone. Let's be the same way. Amen. All right. Isaiah 55, 11, God says, so shall my word be that goes forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please. It shall prosper in the thing whereunto I sent it. So God sent his word. We have a book full and uh, get my little books off of the big book. We have a book full of God's words to us. This is God's word, and it is God speaking to us. Now, you want to know where to start? Get in the word. All right, you get in the word and begin to meditate the word of God. Find out the scriptures on healing if you need healing, the scriptures on finances, provision if you need that, on relationships if you need that. Mm -hmm. Get in the Bible, find out what God has already declared for you, and then stand on that and begin to declare that out of your mouth. All right, now, the word, listen to this, I said this last week, the word went forth from God to your ears. Mm -hmm. Now, may not, you may have read it in the, in the, you know, reading it, maybe you didn't hear it preached, but you read it, so you've heard it. But let's just use the, you know, when you hear something, either here or out here, either in your spirit or with your ears, Let's just use the ears as the example. God's word went forth from his mouth to your ears. All right, in other words, you have the ability to hear what God is promising you or has promised, not going to, already done. Then we take that word that we've heard and we turn that into a declaration or a confession. In other words, you're, you're making it your own. You're not just saying, well, God said, what you do is you take it personal. God said to me, by his stripes, I was healed. Therefore, I am healed. I put me in there. Mm -hmm. Make it personal. That's what you're supposed to do with the word. All right. So the word then that we heard from God now is released as a faith command from our mouths as we speak it out. 
It's a release of that faith. We, we receive the word of God, which faith came with by hearing, hearing by the word. It builds until we've got, actually have faith for healing or provision or whatever it might be. Mm -hmm. And then we begin to declare it. And once we have that, that, well, like it said about uh, Abraham, that, uh, and I'll just say it this way, he was convinced. He was convinced. Mm -hmm. Once we get to the point we're convinced, whether it be healing or whatever, let's use healing. Once I got to the point I was convinced healing was mine, it belongs to me, it's part of my redemption and it's part of salvation. And it belongs to me. I have a right to believe God for healing. Once I get that convinced, <laughs> once I'm convinced of that, and then all of a sudden I begin to declare it, I'm releasing the faith of God that was implanted in me by the word of God. Amen. All right. Now I told you that while standing, there's some things we need to do. I'm hitting this pretty fast here. So you might want to go back and listen to it, and, you know, bit by bit. Uh, we take control while we're standing in faith, waiting for the manifestation of what we're believing for. We take control of our thoughts and we reject every thought that's contrary to what we're believing God for. Mm -hmm. And that's 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 4 and 5. We found out that there in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, that the, the, the area that we're really dealing with at the beginning is the thoughts of our mind. And he takes us from the worst case scenario, which are strongholds, which are harder to tear down than it is to cast something down. He's, he's talking about strongholds. Okay. Then he talks about imaginations, which got us into a condition of having a stronghold. We didn't take control of the imagination. We, we would see ourselves mentally, you know, not, not receiving healing. What if it doesn't work? What if this, what if that? And that will build a stronghold in your mind. And then we go back to where it began, and it began with thoughts. The devil comes along, whispers in your ear, puts a thought in your mind that's contradictory to the word of God. He challenges the word like he did with Adam and Eve. Hath God said, yeah, I could say it this way, did God really mean that? Mm -hmm. And that's the way a lot of people treat it. Mm -hmm. God meant what he said and said what he meant. All right, so we need to take it. God speaks in absolutes. Once he says it, that's law or that's truth. That's done. Amen. All right. So we have to take control of the thoughts. Get your thoughts in agreement with God's thoughts on the issue by going to the scripture mm -hmm. and renewing your mind. The Bible says, receive with, receive with meekness, the engrafted word, <laughs> which is able to save your soul, which is your mind, will, and emotions. So when you receive the word of God, the more you feed on the word, the more it's going to renew your mind or your thoughts. Get control of your thoughts. When the devil comes at you with a thought, well, what if this happens? Or that might happen. Or this could happen. Don't just sit there and let it go. Stand up and say, no, no, devil, you're a liar. The truth's not in you. God said. Mm -hmm. See, God said by the stripes of Jesus, I'm healed. God said, if I call upon him, he will answer me. God said he'd supply all my need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. What'd you say? Where you going, devil? <laughs> He's running off. Why? He can't take it. All right. While we're at this, we declare the end result from the beginning. In other words, the beginning of your faith project is not the prayer itself in the sense that it begins there. It's when you say amen, it goes into motion. You're praying a prayer. The amen is the release so be it done. That's what amen is saying. Romans chapter 4, verses 17 through 21. You need to read that. All right. And I'm just going to read verse 17. As it is written, I have made thee the father. He's talking to Abraham. God is speaking to Abraham, revealing to us some principles here. As it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations before or like him whom he believed, even God. In other words, it's saying, that Abraham was like God in this situation that we're, we're reading about. Mm -hmm. So even God who quickens the dead and calls those things which be not, I could say this way, which are not yet manifested, 
as though they were. So Abraham was like God. The Bible, remember I quoted earlier, the Bible declares that we, people of faith, of the faith of Abraham, are the true heirs of the promises of Abraham. Abraham would, be, would believe what God said from the very beginning because that's God's word to him. God's a covenant-keeping God. So he accepted that as fact. Mm -hmm. And so what he did was he began to speak those things which had not yet manifested as though they had manifested. As far as he was concerned, it was already a done deal. And in the spirit realm, it, does, it is a done deal. Unless you quit in the process, you quit believing God, you back off, you change your confession, you start saying, well, I guess it didn't work. It's been six minutes, you know, and it hadn't worked. <laughs> it's been six days, it hadn't worked. It's been six months, it hadn't worked. I don't think this faith stuff works. Oh, it works. You're just going to have to sometimes stand and confess and declare the word of God. Keep your mind focused on the promises and believe God that he's not a man that he should lie, that what he said he will do. All right, Isaiah 46, verses 9 and 10. Remember the former, former things of old. I am God, and there is none else. I am, he says, there's none. He's not even saying there's no one like me. He's saying there's no, there's no other God. All right, I am God, there is none like me. Declaring, now here's what he said, declaring the end from the beginning. And from ancient times, the things that are not yet done, saying, my counsel shall stand, and I will do my pleasure. Abraham was doing the same thing as he was declaring, I'm the father of many nations. All right. Cast, and and the, the next section of that standing is 1 Peter verses five, uh, chapter 5, verses 6 and 7. And I'll just make the statement, casting all your cares on him for he cares for you. We've got to learn to take the worries, the concerns, the, the cares, the anxieties, <clears throat> cast it over on the Lord. You know, once you cast something away, mm -hmm. it's not in your hands. If you're still worrying and, and, and oh, fretful and what am I going to do? You haven't cast it over on the Lord. You got to cast it over on the Lord and then keep your mind focused on the promises of God. Hallelujah. All right. Then corresponding actions. This is point number four. Joshua 1, 8, this book of the law, which is the word of God, shall not depart out of your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night. That's the first thing he says to do. Meditate on it day and night so that thou mayest observe, which actually means to get a revelation or insight. You've got to meditate on the word before it goes off inside of you. You can't just hear it one time and think, I got it. It's like people in our church once in a while would visit and they say, well, I've heard that faith stuff. I've heard that healing stuff. I've heard that confession stuff. I, you know, like I just heard, need to hear it one time and that's enough. I don't need to hear it again. No, you got to hear it because you got to keep your mind renewed. You got to keep your thoughts focused because the devil's going to be right there to beat you over the head and tell you it's not working. So hearing it once actually is not enough. And if you hear it multiple times, like right now, I've been in a, a season here the last few months of, of looking at the same things from all the different angles that the scripture shows. And, and you say, well, I heard you talk about this last week or last month or three months ago. It, it's really interesting how God has been leading me by the Holy Spirit that there keeps being a crisscrossing of paths over these same subjects. Mm -hmm. But it's because we need to get it in us. It, it, you know, it's helping me as much as it's helping anybody else. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to quit now. <laughs> All right. So he talks about meditating the word of God and then get the revelation. Get what it is that the Holy Spirit's trying to show you that will make this thing come alive in your heart and in your mind. And then he says, do. Okay. So that thou mayest observe and do according to all that's written therein. Then, not until you've been meditating the word of God, gotten that insight or the revelation on it, and then begin to act on it. Mm -hmm. Then, he says here, you will make your way prosperous. Mm -hmm. Who's going to do it? You will. Mm -hmm. All right. And thou shalt deal wisely in the affairs of life. Who's going to deal wisely? You will. Why? Because you got God's wisdom in you as you meditate his word. 
and then thou shalt have good success. What kind of success? Good. You know, people say, I don't want, I don't want to be successful. I just want to be able to live a holy life. Well, you need to be successful in that. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, so success is part of what God wants for us, spirit, soul, and body. Amen. All right. Now, under corresponding actions, I mentioned meditating the word of God, get the revelation and do. James chapter two, verse 20. But wilt thou know, O vain man, that faith without works, works are simply corresponding actions. If you say you believe in healing, then act like it. Mm -hmm. If you say you believe in God's provision, then act like it, talk like it. Mm -hmm. Do everything you can think of to do to, to act and talk in agreement with what God's promises say, okay? So faith without works or corresponding actions is dead. James 2, 26, for as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. So here's the comment I wrote down in my notes. Words alone won't cut it. It's going to take corresponding actions on your part that match the words you're confessing in order for that thing to work, that faith project to work in your life. Hello. All right. James chapter one, verse 22 from the Amplified Translation. But be ye doers of the word, obey or do the message, not merely listeners to it. Betraying yourselves into deception by reasoning contrary to the truth. If you don't make up your mind to act on the word of God as if it is done, then you're going to, the devil's going to get talking in your brain and he's going to whisper in your ear and give you all kinds of reasons why it probably won't work, why it doesn't really mean that, why it doesn't apply to you. Mm -hmm. These are all the things the devil uses against us. And it starts with the thoughts in our minds as the devil is whispering in our ears. Mm -hmm. Amen. So we got to make up our mind. Once we know what the word of God declares as a promise of God for us, I don't mean pick some arbitrary scripture and act on that that goes totally against what the promises of God are, but find out what God promised us in covenant and then make up your mind. You're going to meditate that until it goes off inside of you. But in the process of time, while you're waiting for that to happen, I'm going to act on that as if it's true. I may not understand it yet. When I first got a hold of some of these truths, I did not understand them. But I knew they were true because they were God's word. So I decided I was going to live them, even if I didn't understand how they worked. Well, over time, I began to understand how the principles worked. All right. If you're not committed to doing the word, you will begin to reason and you'll reason yourself right out of God's blessings. All right, point number five here. <clears throat> we need to learn and make it a habit to give God praise and thanksgiving for the desired end result. In other words, once we pray and we've said amen, we need to, next thing out of our mouth, ought to be thanking God and praising him for the end result. If you believe that God answers prayer and you believe what the word says and you pray according to the word of God, which reveals the will of God to us, then you have to, after you are done, you say, amen. Now I'm moving toward, you know, the, the fulfillment of God's plan. <laughs> you need to thank God. Father, I thank you. I, your word said I'm healed, therefore I am healed. Your word says you supply all my need according to your riches in glory by Christ Jesus. So Father, I thank you that you made that promise to me. And I say my needs are met, my, my needs are supplied. And, and Father, I thank you that you're a covenant keeping God. And not only did you make a covenant, which is a binding contract through Abraham and then through Jesus that included me. Father, you swore by yourself, you would keep those promises. So I stand upon your promise and your oath like Abraham did. And I believe I receive and I thank you, Father. I am healed. My needs are met. My bills are paid. My children grow up and serve the Lord. You see what I mean? Whatever category you're dealing with, find out what God says 
apply it, pray, pray accordingly, and then thank God as you step out in your walk of faith on that situation. The principles of faith, Mark 11, 22, I'm just giving you simple, simple scriptures here you can understand and without getting into a lot of theological stuff, which there's a whole lot of people who went to Bible school and studied theology and got totally confused. They have no idea what God is saying. They can tell you scriptures and they can take it apart. And well, you know, it, this verse and that verb and that, you know, this and that and uh, all the different ways it could have been, uh, but maybe wasn't, we don't know, you know. Let's take God's word as it says, Mark eleven twenty two through 24. <clears throat> verse 22 says, and Jesus answering and saith unto them, have faith in God, or more literally, the faith of God. How do you do that? Through the word of God, which puts his faith in you. All right. Verse 23, for verily or truly, I say to you, now listen to this, that whatsoever, whosoever, I'm sorry, that whosoever shall, what? Say unto this mountain, not, not a philosophical mountain, not an um, an illustrative mountain, you know what I mean? Something that not there, but we can illustrate it. He was talking about a mountain. That's the kind of power faith produces. That whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he says shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he saith. Now, if you're going to do this, there's some things you got to quit saying because your negative words of unbelief, even jokingly negate the positive words of faith that you declare. So if you say, my God supplies all my need. And then later on you say, I just don't know what I'm going to do. How am I going to pay my bills? You got to keep on saying, no, my God supplies all my needs. I may not know how this is going to happen, but I'm declaring God's going to do it because he promised he would. <clears throat> the next verse, verse 24, takes the principle of faith revealed in verses 22 and 23 and applies it to our prayer life in verse 24. Therefore, because of this principle in verses 22 and 23, therefore I say unto you, what things soever you desire, so many people try and explain away the blessings of God. It says right there, what things soever, things soever you desire. When you pray, believe that you receive them, then what? Well, I'm going to explain that part to you here in a second. And you shall have them. So here's the question I like to ask people. What are you going to get when you pray? People say, well, I'm going to get those things. No, I didn't say that. Oh, that's right. I'm going to get what I desire. No, I actually didn't say that. <clears throat> it says, what things serve you desire when you pray, believe. When? When you believe. When, when you pray. When I pray, I have to believe that when I say amen, I received them. I may not have received them in the flesh yet, but in the spirit realm, it's done. The only thing you're going to get when you pray is the thing you believe you received the moment you said Amen. You say, Pastor, you're getting kind of hard, hard nosed. That's because I've been living this for 50 years. I know it to be true. And I want to see you get it because it'll change your life. All right. It says, so, so here's the, the really, let me give it to you this way. The things that you believed you received when you prayed are the things that you're going to see manifested in your life. And if you didn't believe you received them when you prayed, you're still waiting. I'm sorry, that's not going to work. Well, I hope it works. No, that's not faith. That's not even hope. Hope is a confident, favorable expectation of good things to come. All right, Isaiah 46, verse 10. Again, I've read this to you already once. I'm sorry, my nose is just kind of itching here. That's why I'm kind of rubbing it. By Isaiah 46, 10. He talks about declaring again the end from the beginning and from ancient times, the things that are not yet done. God speaks of things literally in, in earth time. He says things 
that, that will be answered thousands of years down the road. But we don't have thousands of years. We have maybe thousands of hours. I don't know how many thousands of days, but you understand it's different for, for humankind than it is for God the Creator. Not, not different in, in principle, but God don't operate on time. It, it, he's not limited by time. He said it when he created the worlds and it's still going to happen. He's, he's, he just knows it's done. He's not worrying about it. He's not concerned. It's going to have things he said are going to happen. Well, we've got to decide the same way. So we've got to then begin doing what God says. Amen. Declaring the end from the beginning. That's why we say we have our new cars our new vehicles, our new home, whatever it might be you're believing for, you got to begin to declare, I have it. And be so adamant about it. When people start mocking you or questioning you, well, I don't see it. Where, where, you say you got a new car. Where is it? Oh, it's, it's out there somewhere. Somebody got my car and it's coming to me. So you got to stay in faith, no matter what people say, no matter what the devil puts in your mind. Romans 4, 17 through 21. I'm just going to read verse 17. As is written, uh, we, we read this already in the beginning. I have made thee the father of many nations before or like him, God, whom he believed, even God, who quickeneth the dead and calleth those things which, let me say it this way, are not yet manifested as though they were. Just like Abraham did. If, I, if I'm going to believe God for something, let's say, again, a car or a truck or a house or a job, um, healing. I'm going to declare the end result. The moment I say amen, I'm talking about what I believe God for is mine. I'm not waiting for it. I'm not going to get it. I hope, you know, I hope it's going to happen. No, I have my new vehicle. I have my, I have my healing. I have my needs met. We've got to begin to declare like God, like Abraham, the end result that we prayed over from the beginning, the moment we say amen, and then give God thanks and praise for that end result. Even though you haven't seen it manifested yet, you got to see it in your heart. It'll manifest in your life. Amen. All right, hold fast, stand. While standing, take control of your thoughts, declare the end from the beginning, cast all your cares on him. Meditate the word God, number four, get the revelation and do it until you're fully persuaded like Abraham. Declare the end results from the beginning. Uh, and make sure that you have corresponding actions. Number five, give God praise and thanksgiving for the results before you ever see them with your natural eyes. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, well, I'm right at, oh, really close to the end of my time here. Listen, uh, I wanna pray for you really quick here. Uh, Father, I pray for every person watching this program in the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you. The anointing is flowing right now. And de I declare, according to your word, Father, the anointing destroys the yoke. I declare that the, the yoke of sickness and disease in your body, I command it to be broken and destroyed right now. Pain and suffering be destroyed out of your body. Financial lack and want be destroyed out of your life in the name of Jesus. Anything else that's been binding you up and holding you back, I command that thing to be broken and destroyed in your life. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. I'm going to put a couple of banners up quickly here uh, on the screen. Uh, if, if you're wondering, gee, how can I support this ministry? There you go. There's PayPal, uh, Venmo, and Zelle. By the way, we did just get the Cash app. I'm not quite sure how to use it yet, but I did just get it. So we'll have that functioning too. Also, if you want to support this ministry with tithes or offerings um, through the mail, uh, make it out to CFC. And then there's the address there at the top of the screen. And then I'm going to cover the other part of my head up there with that one. If you want to give by debit or credit card, you can do that by sending the card information to us through our email or through texting the number that's shown there on the screen and as soon as we run the card and it's processed we will delete that so nobody can get their hands on it 
So those are the different ways you can give once we get uh, the cash app figured out what I have to do. Uh, I'll, we'll have that available for you as well. And then pray about uh, not, not just giving a one-time offering in support of this ministry. If you believe in what we're doing and, and you say, well, you ought to be able to see the results. Over 25,000 people we've ministered to this week. Uh, if you want to be a part of that, remember when you support this ministry on a regular basis, like as a partner, that you get credit for everything we accomplish, every life that's changed, every person that's healed, every person that's born again and spirit filled, you get credit for it because you support this ministry. So not only do we believe in, you know, individual one-time givers or occasional givers, but we're believing God for a hundred partners. And if you want to uh, be a part of what we're doing, because the partner in a sense joins arm in arm with us, accomplishing the work of God. And so partners pray for us daily. Partners, uh, if we have a faith project, you get involved, put your faith with ours, increasing that power going forth to accomplish, and then support us financially on a monthly basis. We're not supported by any company or any social media platform. Uh, it's just supported by you, the viewers. But we're believing God for 100 partners, and if that rings a bell with you, if that goes off in your spirit, then just make a commitment, be faithful. We've been partners with Jerry Savelle Ministries and Kenneth Copeland Ministries uh, for over 40, almost 50 years now. It wasn't just a short-term deal. We made a commitment. We support other ministries the same way. Uh, and I won't get into all of them, but uh, we there's six ministries that we support faithfully every month with whatever comes in. We, we actually tithe uh, into those ministries besides giving offerings. So let the Lord direct you. And if you want to support this ministry that way, uh, we invite you to do that. There's the ways you can do it. And so I'm going to go ahead and remove those now off the screen. And uh, now you can see my pretty face again. <laughs> Hallelujah. Listen, we'll be back here Tuesday night with our Bible study. You'd be praying for us. Uh, our, one of our faith projects is 100 part monthly partners um, <clears throat> because we can do more for the kingdom of God once we get to that happening. Um, agree with us for this 25,000 mark we reached uh, this week to become now our new baseline. And once we've had that happening week after week for a month or two, then we'll set a new goal. And remember, because you uh, liked and shared and followed and subscribed and got notification button and made comments, you've allowed us to reach more people. So keep up the good work. We appreciate it. And uh, we love you guys. And we'll see you Tuesday night.